So for something to be good, the intention has to be good, the circumstances have to be good, and the act itself has to be good. And the more you practice that, the easier it is. I mean, and the, the, uh, the whole idea of a conscience is that at some point you, you reach the point where you automatically, you know, your body tells you, you know, this, this isn't right. Now, of course, then the trick is, what are the actions that go with that? So, uh, any reactions to the video? I mean, the second half was, I thought, better than the first, but it's, you know, it was a lot in it. Okay, there'll be a test. Yeah. I don't know if it's a question or just a comment. Um, in grade school, the nuns, Benedictine, uh, taught me the Baltimore Catechism. Yes. Basic and mortal and venial sin, black and white, what is and what isn't. In high school, uh, the Christian brothers said, forget everything the nuns taught you. <laughs> and in regards to mortal and venial sin, mortal sin you have to feel is wrong. You have to know it's wrong or it's not. Uh, on that note, Father Robbie says, whatever's in your heart, what's the solution? Well, and, uh, you know, we're going to talk a little bit more about this next week, but it's, that, it's the idea of forming a good conscience. You know, the, the, uh, the nuns, I had Benedictine nuns as a, in grade school, so I, I got that same thing. I, I used to know, you know, I had the whole Baltimore Catechism, uh, you know, committed to memory, which they required. But, you know, when you're a kid, everything's kind of black and white. It was kind of like this guy tells his son, you can't play on the monkey bars. Well, we'll assume when his son got older, <laughs> he was allowed to play, you know, that was the rule for then, and that rule, you know, can be modified. Uh, the, uh, the point that they bring up about mortal sin is you have to know that it's not the right thing to do. And if you don't have a well-formed conscience, then you really don't know. So, the, the, you're at the beginning, this is, this is one-on-one, we're at the beginning level. The next thing that happens is you have to build your conscience to a point that those questions become easier and easier for you, even though the choices get harder. But, so, I, I'll agree with Father Ravi if what's in your heart is properly trained. Uh, so, and, that, and, that, and that's what a good, that's what a good conscience is. You know, you, you make decisions and the pathway to good, to being virtuous, is strengthened. And it gets easier and easier, hopefully, to be a virtuous person. Well, yeah. Is, is what's in my heart necessarily right? Well, well it, how about the bioethicist? Uh, there's a doctor and he's operating on a woman. And he knows that uh, if he delivers the baby, she dies. Does he abort and save the mother? Well, that's the that's why you have people help you make that decision. You know, it's and even that, you know, it's shades of gray. How how sure are you that what you're going to do is going to lead to this? If it, if if the intention was good, you know, he wants to save the mother and save the baby, and he gives it and he uses his best trained skills to do that, that's, then he has a good intention and a good act, and the outcome may not be what he wants, but, you know, does that, that make sense? I mean, that's... Oh, well, sure. I mean, what if he knows for sure it's one or the other? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And then that's when you have to decide, and that's why we have other people to help you do that. I mean, that's one of the, one of the advantages of going to the sacrament of reconciliation is to have somebody to say, you know, you say, here's where I am, you know, give me some guidance in this. You know, I mean, the things that are easy for us to decide, okay, but then there always are things that are more difficult. I mean, I, uh, like I said, we had foster kids and we had to do things sometimes. I mean, I had to, I put one of the kids in the hospital and uh, in a psychiatric hospital, I had to have the police come out and take him, okay? And the kid, I mean, it's really sad, I can still see his face, but he, he looked at this, the cop that came to take him was like a guy about this big, well the boy was, you know, very, you know, he worked out stuff all the time. He looked at the, 
at the patrolman who came and he the patrolman said, okay, you know, a, a judge has written an order, you're gonna have to go into the hospital and I'm here to take you. And the boy looked at him and said, who besides you is gonna take me? You know, it was pretty clear, I mean, that, that patrolman was not gonna be able to take him out by himself. And I had to say, I'll help him. And the kid just burst out crying. And I was like, you would do that to me? Well, then once he got healthier, then he understood the decision. But it was really pain. I was hoping they'd send two really big guys. To, but, you know, because it was the right thing to do. I mean, he was a danger to himself at that point. But so, you know, and, it was, and I didn't know if the outcome was going to be good. He might have, you know, my fear was, He'll go and be angry, and he may never get over it. I mean, I, I was about all he had to hold on to, so that was pretty a pretty scary decision. I mean, it worked out. It did work out, but I didn't know at the time if I was even doing the right thing. I knew my intentions were good, but I wasn't sure it was the right thing to do. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, so tell your brother I took good care of you. I will. Okay, so he is his own guardian angel. So it's kind of nice. Deacon? Yes? I spent 25 years in law enforcement putting people with ill-formed consciences in jail. Yes. Uh, and many of them were sociopaths, which if you don't know what a sociopath yes, is. Yes, I have a brother who's a sociopath, yeah. so yes. So uh, I think that's part of our problem as a society, not just in America, but elsewhere in that we are not doing a good job of helping our youth form their conscience. I agree. And if we don't do that, okay, I mean, it's a question of economics. Uh, if we don't teach our children the right things to do, then we allow them to do the wrong things thinking they're the right things. Or save them from their consequences. Right. You know, I mean, that's, you know, a lot of the kids I worked with, you know, they had, they were in situations where they never had a consequence, you know, that they, they got out of it for one, one way or another. And right. You end up with a pretty poor sense, hey, if it's good for me, it's good for everybody. You know, that kind of, you know, we see that a lot. We enable so. Okay, so it is 7.31, according to me. Uh, so, shall we close with a prayer? Lord, we give you thanks for all you give to us, especially this opportunity to grow in our love of your Son. We ask you to continue to guide us strengthen us and fortify us. We truly desire to become virtuous people. Aid us to carry your light with us wherever we go. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you. Now, I was going to let Father Robbie do that, but he... Worked. He was gone. He thinked out on us. I guess he's at the night, so... Yeah. <laughs> I think his car was here when I drove up, so we just took out the back of it. And Ryan, thank you. Thank you. Well, now I'm
next week. Okay. Y'all, there's another chance. You did good. Thank you, thank you. And the video's pretty good. Yeah, the, the first part, you know, like I say, you know, they were like, you know, it's a little too black and white. That was the... Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not going to get it. Oh, 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 I'